Hey guys, today I've got a very special video to share with you. This video will be a showcase of all the rare cards that I have that I'm going to plan to send in to get graded from PSA or to sit on in the long run for the long term investment. So I've kept them in this generations box here. First of all, we have some pre-release promos sealed in the packets. So I'll just pull these out to show you what we have. We have a Vivid Voltage Charizard sealed in the packet. This is a beautiful card from the Vivid Voltage pre-release kit. So I have one of these. These are valued between 200 and 250 Australian dollars right now. One of these I purchased for $220 from overseas in Canada when the set came out. And I've been sitting on it ever since. And the rest I've pulled myself from packs. So I have one. Two, three, four, five pre-release Charizards. So I have a theory that these will follow a similar pattern to the X and Y Evolutions pre-release Charizards. And after a couple of years, you could see these going up in price over 500 reaching a thousand dollars in five to ten years provided that they're sealed mint or grade worthy of a PSA 10 and the centering on these are quite quite all right as well so there's five of them I also have some of the other pre-release promos that came with the pre-release kits I have Lugia two Lugias three Lugias. Look at the artwork here, it's just beautiful. The artwork on all the pre-release promos are different to the artwork of the same cards within the set. And you'll notice that they also have the Vivid Voltage print here to show that it's a pre-release promo from the set. So that's three Lugias. They're valued between 90 to $100. And all of those, all of these I've pulled from booster packs, except the one Charizard. Also have one Snorlax pre-release promo. This is about $50. And a Surviper Sun and Moon Burning Shadows promo. I remember I bought a few of the Burning Shadows pre-release packs back in the day to hold on to for a while. And I couldn't help myself and ended up opening them after about four months. And I got this and Zygarde, three of Survivors and a Zygarde. So moving on to the cards that I wanna send off to get graded. Here's a sealed Pikachu from the McDonald's 2016 set. So this would be mint, still sealed hasn't been le hasn't left the packet hasn't been touched in here we've got the cards that I would like to send off to get graded so here's where all of the money lies just when you thought all those charizards were worth something you haven't even seen this pile yet so first of all we have an amazing rare rayquaza from vivid voltage Rayquaza being my favorite Pokemon, I've collected a few of these. So we have one, two, three amazing rare Rayquazas that I'll be sending off to get graded. The first one is a little bit off center, right to left. You'll notice the right side is thinner than the left side. But the other two are quite all right. If you look closely here, 
the centering is much better on these and on the back quite good as well. So I'm hoping that these will grade well. I'll just put them upside down like that. We also have a Celebi Amazing Rare, also from Vivid Voltage. This one is also a little bit off center right to left, but still a mint card as it is. And another Celebi Vivid Voltage Amazing Rare. This one is much better centered. This would grade a lot higher. And on the back, it's a little bit off center left to right, but the grading to get a high grade, the back isn't really that fussy on centering. It's more about the front. So this card here would grade quite high, I would imagine. I also have one, two Jirachi Amazing Rares from Vivid Voltage. These cards here are about $40 each, 35 to 40. Um, people have been playing them in decks at the moment, so I'd imagine once they rotate out of um, the standard format, they probably won't be played as much and the price might lower a little bit. But then again, they are also a, an amazing rare, which is, as we know, an ultra rare, and they look fantastic. So the price could also increase as when they go out of print, the price will go up. So there was two of those. Then after the Amazing Rares, we have some Shining Fates, Shining Vault cards that I've pulled myself. We have the Poi Pol, Lucario, Electrode GX. This is one of the more better centered cards that I have from the Shining Fates set. Unfortunately, it's just an Electrode. I would have liked it to be a rarer card, but it's still nice to have a shiny card that's well centered. We also have a Glaceon GX. This one is not as well centered as the rest. It's a bit more off center, left to right. The right border's thicker on the front. The back is fine, but this will probably get dropped down to an eight, a seven or an eight, maybe a nine, but it couldn't be a 10 with how off centered that border is at the front. Still a lovely card. A lot of people love the EV Lucians. Then we have a Decidueye. This is my favorite starter Pokemon from the Sun and Moon series, and probably the best shining Pokemon from the Sun and Moon starter Pokemon. This is one fine looking shining GX card. A bit better centered than the rest as well. This will probably grade quite high. On the back, it's a little bit off center left to right. The left border is thinner, right is thicker. It might be too off center to get a higher grade but as i said before with the psa grading they're not too fussy on the back centering it's more important about the front here we have a gardevoir gx shining this is another better centered on the front shining card that i have pulled and a beautiful blue color one of my favorite um, cards from the shining set of hidden fates and another card that is also quite well centered. So this is another card that should grade quite high. These ones are Ultra Beasts. I don't really care about them too much, but I decided to put them in anyway because they are the full art shinies that I pulled from Hidden Fates. So we got Kartana GX. Zerkatry GX We have the Shining Vault Stadium Shrine of Punishment We have multiple ones of these but I pulled out the best centered ones that I had of the Moltres 
Zapdos and Articuno GX Full Art from Hidden Fates. If you see any whitening here, it's just dust on the top loader. These cards have been sleeved and in top loaders, so there's no dots on these modern cards. We also have one Rainbow Rare one. These are just beautiful cards, the Rainbow Rares. Shining Vault Hiker. Rockruff. This is another well centered shining card. The shining cards from the standard set are quite difficult to grade because sometimes in the print, of these cards, there are little spots that are melted out of the texture pattern. So if you look closely here at this rock rough, there is actually a tiny little dot just above where his ear connects to the tail. Just there. Which is actually the, the texture print of this card has had a little blot of melted texture when the card was printed so this one won't be a perfect grade unfortunately but it's still a nice card it's very difficult for these cards to grade high but when you're dealing with cards like these it's a bit easier because these textures are harder to screw up in the printing process so we have a Ralts nice looking card here well centered i believe this one doesn't have any ink blots so this is going to be grading quite well we have a lolan vulpix this is a fan favorite nice looking card here i also can't see any blots on this card so this one should also grade all right we have a froki this one seems to be all right as well a little bit off center left to right but the front is also a little bit off center left to right. So this one might only grade a nine at max, unfortunately. Jesse and James, another fan favorite. This has been two of the main characters from the television series since the nineties. Nice looking card here, also well centered. So we've got some more full art shinies. We've got Golisopod. And some of the higher end ones, we've got Mewtwo GX, shiny Mewtwo GX. This is in the lower hundreds. It would cost about 130 to $180 to get one of these mint. And that's just as of this moment in January, 2022. We have a Umbreon GX. This one here would be about over $200 to buy brand new, a mint one. This is also one of the better scented cards that I have as well. So I'm banking on this grading quite high. I don't feel like taking it out of the sleeve there, but you can trust me when I tell you that this is quite a good condition card. It'll, it should grade quite high. 
We have some older cards here. This is a secret rare Mew Hollow Foil from EX Holon Phantoms. The holo pattern is beautiful on this card, and there isn't any imperfections on the holo at all, not even any printing lines. Fantastic card, very well centered on the front. Only appears to be some sort of small stain on the front, but it appears to be from the printing process. So if you look at PSA's rules for grading their cards from 1 to 10, you're allowed to have one printing error blemish on your card, provided that everything else on the card is mint. Very nice looking card here. Now next we have a Ho-Oh, Shiny Ho-Oh from Call of Legends. Now I actually picked this one up with a bundle of other cards for $40. And this card is easily sold for over $200 mint. It actually has a printing line in the holo, which is a little bit unfortunate, but for such a beautiful card, I'm gonna get it graded anyway. Let's see if I can pull it out to show the printing line. It's very hard to see under this light, but there is a printing line that runs horizontally from the tip of this wing here. So I'm just gonna put this back and we'll move on to what else is underneath. So just when you thought these cards were expensive, we're getting into the high end territory now. So we have a Charizard GX promo from the Hidden Fate set. It's about $25 for this one. It's not one of the most more expensive cards, but the next ones are getting there. We've got Fates Collide pre-release Tyranitar this holofoil was released with the Fates Collide pre-release event, similar to the Charizard's Lugia, Snorlax, and Survivors from before. They show the set name in the corner of the picture for which set they are pre-release promoting. So this one here is easily over $100 to sell mint. Very rare card, and Tyrantar is a fan favorite. So this would be very nice to grade and see if it can grade high. Next we have a Dragonite Warner Bros movie promo. This is not in the best condition. It has a little bit of wear on the bottom left corner there. Top right corner. And on the back you can see exactly what I mean as it shows on the front. Top right, bottom left corner. Same is on the back. So this one wouldn't grade too high. I wouldn't expect it to get higher than a five, to be honest, at max, due to the wear on the back of the card and the front. Here we have some of my favorite cards, Rayquaza. This is the Shining Rayquazas. This one here is incredibly off-center on the front. Maximum grade, I would imagine this would be, would get a an eight maybe a nine, depending how lenient they are grading this. It is way too off center on the right to the left. There is no imperfections on the card apart from that. And on the back, it would be all right to grade higher with the off center back, but the front, they're very strict on the front for grading. So this one, maybe maximum eight, I'd imagine. This one here is a different story. This one here is much better centered. I would say this is a grading 10 contender. The shining cards from all the sets 
that have the texture just on the Pokemon themselves and nowhere else on the card are very easy to grade. The reason for that being is that the holofoil, which are any part on the card that can easily be scratched, is only in tiny little parts within the Pokemon card itself. So provided that that little 2% of the entire card doesn't have any scratches on it, the rest of the card should be very easy to scan, see that there's no scratches and go, yep, that's a pristine 10 card right here. So I'm hoping this one would get a 10, to be honest. This one here, hoping a 10 out of 10. And just again, if you see any white spots on this card, it's just the dust on the case or the sleeve. There's no actual white spots on this card at all. Now, these two cards here have a little story behind it. One of them I pulled myself from a booster pack, which is this one. And this one here I purchased from somebody. I was very keen to get this card and I found a seller, bought it off him for $750. I was very excited to buy it. The price dropped a fair bit since I purchased it off him. And since then I also realized that it was a little bit off center front on the front left to right. So if you have a look on the left side, it's a bit thinner on the border. The right side is a bit thicker. When I send this off to get graded, I'd imagine it wouldn't get a 10. The highest it should be is a nine, but also these cards are incredibly difficult to grade because this texture pattern here can easily have printing defects within it. So provided that the printing defects, there is no printing defects, the back is fine, the front is fine, a little bit off center left to right, maximum grade for this one would be a nine, unfortunately. However, this one is a different question. This one here, I pulled from a booster pack. I was so excited to pull this from a booster pack. I opened up the pack, saw this, and just couldn't couldn't speak. I, lo I was lost for breath. This one is much better centered on the front. Perhaps I've gotten them mixed up. Yeah, this one here is the off-centered one, and this one is the better one. So you can see clearly on the back of this one, it's quite off-center. The left side's thicker, and the right side's thinner. So this is the one, sorry, I got them mixed up. This is the one that would be getting a nine. And this one here, you can see centering on the back, left to right, is quite all right. And on the front, if I got the measuring tape out, it's actually closer on the left to the right. This would be about, I'd imagine two and a half mil and the right side may be three millimeters. Whereas this one here, it's about two millimeters to three millimeters. So this one wouldn't grade as high as the other one. Now up here we have one, two, base set Charizards. One of these, I purchased for $100, that's this one here, $100 uh, six years ago, and now these go for like about $600 near mint, just by itself, up as it's $600, depending how good condition it is. And these cards here, I've, I've been trying to estimate grades for them, but it's just so hard to predict how PSA grades all their old holo cards. The the way that they do them is is very difficult, and I'm I haven't been very accurate at guessing the grades at all. But if I was to have a guess, which is probably wrong, um, this one here I have is is a very nice clean Charizard. It has a little scratch on the holo foil. It's not really clear unless you use a different light, so I'll have to use a different light to be able to see it. And it's well centered, so that is a plus. The scratch on the holofoil is not uh, not very good, 
So if we started at a grade of a 10 and I was PSA, I would say, okay, we're allowed one error. That tiny little scratch there, okay, that's, that's, that's all right, one error, 10. And then we look at the back and we go, okay, there's a little bit of whitening up on the top left. So now it's down to a nine. So the maximum grade now can be a nine for this card. And then upon closer inspection, I'm just gonna take it out here to show you closer. But there is a little bit of silvering on the top left corner. See just there? So the nine is now lowered again just a little bit, maybe an 8.5 or an eight. So once again, the PSA rules for grading is when they have a 10, you want to score a 10, you're allowed one very small error or a printing error. Any more than that, the grade would be lowered more. So you see again, just on my right side finger, it's a bit more of a silver spot. So this one was probably, this one in my opinion would be a solid eight, solid seven to eight, this one here but I've never been accurate with predicting the grades for the base set Charizards or even any Wizards of the Coast Hollows at the second. I've never been very good at that. So what we'll do is we'll just send them off to get graded and see how they go. There's nothing more we can do from that. The second one here I purchased for $600 recently this is one of a more cleaner card that I purchased because the hollow foil doesn't have any scratches on it. If we just pull it out and have a look, it's very clean looking hollow. Very nice, lots of sparkles, lots of shimmer. Still has the full original gloss. But if we take the light to the side on the right, it has silvering along the entire edge here. So I'm not sure if PSA would count that as just a little bit of a print error or if they would actually count that as damage to the card. But if there is any actual damage to the cardboard, the highest grade a card can receive is a six. Anything higher than a six, you need to have no physical damage on the cardboard itself. If they decide that this silvering on the side is a printing defect, then it could be higher than a six. There's a possible chance that this could be a seven or an eight. There is no silvering on anywhere else on the card, no silvering on the face. It's just the edges. So we'll see how this goes when it gets graded. But as I said before, I am no grading expert on the vintage hollows. So we'll have to see how it goes. This one here is a X and Y Evolutions pre-release Charizard. This card here doesn't have a lot of PSA 10s in the world for two reasons. One, the card is extremely rare. Not a lot of X and Y Evolutions pre-release Charizard hollows exist. And the second reason is a lot of them are like this and extremely off center. You see the top is thinner than the bottom and the right is a little bit thinner than the left side. Due to the extreme off-centering top to bottom, I'd imagine the highest grade this one would receive would be a seven to an eight. I'm banking on the seven just due to the fact that the card, apart from the centering, is completely flawless. No scratches on the hollow, no edge whitening, no white dots. Just the off-centering, unfortunately, plays a big part. They actually have the rules on the PSA website of how off-centered ratio your card can be if you wanted to receive a higher grade. So we have another card here, Suicune Hollow from, I believe that's Neo uh, Revelations. This is one of my favorite dogs and it's a beautiful card, but unfortunately it won't grade very high. And I'll show you by pulling it out just at the bottom here. 
there you can see next to my thumb is a little crease. Now provided that the rest of the card is mint, the highest grade with a crease or any type of damage to the card according to PSA would be a six. Now I would think that this card wouldn't get a six either because it also has a little bit of dark smudging on the top and it also has some scratches, very, very small, very hard to see along the hollow. So if I was going to have an estimate of how high this card would grade, maximum I would say is a four, but a very strong four for that. I'm hoping that my other cards would grade higher, but I just like this card because it looks very pretty. So I'll put that to the side and look at the last three cards that I have in my collection that I'm going to send off. The first one is this Dark Blastoise, very minty card, very clean, no scratches, very well centered on the front, and on the back, no spots, maybe a tiny little white spot just there on the bottom right corner, top right corner, one white spot. This is a solid contender for a PSA 9 or a PSA 8, I would say. Now, as I said before, I'm also no grading expert for these vintage cards, so this is just all my own opinion. Next up, we have Venusaur Hollow. I picked this one up at a vintage store local to my area. They sold this to me for $130, and it's a very pretty card but similar to the second Charizard I showed you, it actually has silvering just on the bottom edge, just here. So depending on how PSA assesses that silvering as card damage or just a printing defect, this could be anywhere from a highest grade of a six to possibly a highest grade of a seven or an eight. has a little bit of a white spot on the top left corner and the top right corner otherwise a very beautiful card and even without being graded everyone can agree that these cards are all just absolutely fantastic very minty and my last card my absolute holy grail of the set is this Lugia holofoil pristine condition Lugia very, very well centered card, this one. Absolutely incredible. Tiny little white spots. One white spot on the top right, one white spot on the top left, one white spot on the bottom left. It could get away with ha having these for a PSA 10. Otherwise, in my opinion, this would be a solid contender for a PSA 9. You are allowed to have one blemish for a 10. So if there was one spot on the top left corner, bottom left corner or top right corner, but none on the others, this would be a solid contender for a PSA 10, but depending how they assess the card, they could just see that these spots are the way the card is cut and say that it is a printing blemish. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully this card here grades quite high. I'm hoping for a nine but I'll also settle for an eight for this one. Anything lower than an eight, I'll be very disappointed. And this card here I bought on Christmas day. I traveled about three hours round trip after Christmas lunch to buy this off somebody. And then I came back and I was so happy to have this card. So that's everything from my box to show you guys. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. There is a lot of very rare cards here, a lot of expensive cards, and 
this pile of rare cards will continue to grow over the year and eventually I will send these off to get graded and when they come back we'll check the grades against what my expectations were and hopefully I wouldn't be disappointed. So we'll see when they get back. Thanks for watching this video guys. If you want to see more of this type of content or openings of card packets and collections that I buy, just subscribe and all the new content that I upload, you'll get a notification. You can watch it as soon as it comes out. So if you're excited for that, go subscribe and see the next videos I have. Thanks guys.